YouTube, it's Dr. Yash. Um, working on the bike again. You can see in the title, it's part two of the video. Part one, I ran into a little bit of a roadblock. The snap ring that holds the fork lower, the, the slider in the fork was, the ears are rusted off of it. So I'm gonna try a little something today and see if we can get the fork apart so that I can get further in there. To, I'm gonna try to take the, the fork tube out of the fork lower in order to give myself some room to maybe get some pliers in there or drill a hole in it and use a pick to pry it out. Something's on fire. That's the fire department. I actually think it's kind of a cool sound. It's weird as that may sound to you. We'll wait. They're gonna do it a third time? Yep. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump cut to us looking at this fork lower and have this wheel back off of here, have the bike propped up so that I can get to that uh, fork lower and go from there. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so we're back, got the wheel off, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this just in case some oil settled to the bottom here, there's a little bolt on the bottom of the fork. See if we get oil coming out. We probably will get a little bit. I got a fan blowing, so if it's got a lot of wind noise, that's why. Hmm, kind of got a gray look to it. It doesn't look emulsified or... I might have a little bit of water in it. Nothing real bad. It stinks. It smells pretty bad. So what we're going to do is there is a hex bolt in the bottom of there. I'm going to go ahead and guess it's six millimeters. I haven't checked yet, but that was a good guess. I think a lot of, a lot of uh, Hondas are six millimeters. And what I'm going to try to do is, since I'm having problems with the snap ring in here, I'm going to try to go ahead and gut the fork and just drop everything off the bottom. I think that's what I did on the 350s. I didn't even take the snap ring out until the whole rest of the fork was apart. But we're going to see if this works. I hope so. We're going to use the axle for lever. Oh, of course I dropped it in there. That's not good. Get out of there. I was going to use the axle for a lever, but that doesn't really fit in the fork backwards. It kind of does. Just good enough to get stuck. There. And what that's all about, I'll just use it this way. My ratchet got lubricated. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, that wasn't too tight at all. Not too bad. Must have left some air in because now we got more oil coming out. I'm going to let that drain. This stuff stinks. Smells like maybe they did use ATF in there. It's just kind of went, kind of went bad. Oh, nope. That ain't 
helping. I just gotta see if I can dig this, this snap ring out of here. Thing's so rusty, you'd think it would come apart real easy. I don't think that's gonna be the case. It's in, uh, like, Rust Limbo, which is of no relation to Rush Limbaugh, I don't think. They might be related. But, uh, Rust Limbo. It's, like, just rusty enough you can't do anything with it, and too, and not rusty enough where you can't just bust it out of there. I don't believe the PB Blaster did much for me. It ain't moving. We're just gonna have to fight with it a little bit more and see if I can pry it out. Thing is, if it's this rusty, if you get it to start moving, it's probably not going to go back in the groove as easily as it came out. So it's not just going to snap back in place. You really can just walk it out once you get it moving, but that's going to be tricky here. And you gotta have some really small tools. You don't have a whole lot of room here. We only got 39 millimeters to begin with in this in the top of this fork lower. I mean you got like five or six on each side with the torque tube in there, so I think to save you guys the lovely experience of sitting here watching me hmm and haw and stare at it and scratch my head I'm gonna jump cut and uh, once I get this thing moving then we'll go from there so I'll see you in a second and then immediately I come back because I already started getting progress as soon as I turned the camera off so I went in here kind of went swinging lightly but uh, I started tapping on that snap ring and it started bending a little bit and I went in here with the pick again and I just peeled like two pieces off of it so it's to that point I think in at least certain parts of it it's rusty enough where it don't it ain't got no strength left so I'm gonna try to peel this thing out and try to chase it around you know you get like half of it out of there and you can probably get the rest out real easy get in here and tap on it. I mean, I think this thing's just folding in here. Yeah. I'm just peeling it up. Go run around, tap on it. I'm gonna have to run in here with a wire wheel or something, or a, maybe a Scotch Bright or something like that, and clean this all up. It's gonna be ugly. Got a little bit of cleanup work to do, but I should be able to should be able to make something out of it. Hey, look, here's a piece right there. Piece of ring. Sparks. Good thing I don't have gas all up in here.
this is what I was wanting to do here. You probably won't be able to see it very well. But, kind of working the, uh, the tip of the snap rings right here. What I started doing is I was taking the hammer and the, and the uh, screwdriver and kind of tapping around here to kind of almost fold it in on itself. And then to jar loose any rust or whatever, I would just do the slide hammer thing with the fork lower. But uh, that seems to have helped me out a lot. And basically what I can do now is I can get behind there with a little screwdriver. It's kind of going to be like a bookmark for me. So that'll keep it from falling back in the groove. And what I said about it trying to go back in the groove was a lie. You get it out of there, it goes right back in there. So, just to be forewarned, if you ever have to do something like this. But now I'm basically just going to work with this thing real gently so I don't break off a bunch of pieces and uh, just follow it all the way around until it comes out. And I can say without a doubt, I'm not going to have the same problem with this side because I already got the snap ring out. So we're good there. thing was done you look at this other one it's kind of supposed to be wavy looking this one's not in great shape but you know <laughs> it don't look like that either actually still had a lot of meat left on it you see where I kind of was hammering around here but it worked it broke it loose And that slider bushing on the bottom looks pretty good. Good. That one looks pretty decent. There's like sludge all down in the bottom of there. Let's see. Oh, you can't see it, but it's nasty. I'm going to have to flush that out. I was really hoping that this seal would come out of here with all that beating. It's close. There's a backing ring in here. It's a washer that's kind of back up for that seal. Looks like it might have taken a hit during all this, but I don't know for sure. I'll know for sure when I pull this off because it should be a lot easier. We're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start by taking this bottom bolt out of the lower. I didn't drain the fork. It had air pressure. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh man. Gross. That got everywhere. Stinks. All over me too. Dr. Yash got a bath and now needs a bath. Dang. I mean, it splashed back everywhere. Probably got on you. Nope. It's about the only thing that didn't get hit. Oh, man. That is disgusting.
But the show must go on. Sometimes things happen. See, I should have moved it. And I didn't. And that's what you get. Uh, okay, yeah. We did a little bit of damage to that other side. Because, see, that ring, that one came right out with it. So there's, here's that backer ring I was talking about, the little support ring. There's the other snap ring, which is actually in pretty good shape, it's just ugly looking. And that is an OEM style seal there, which I am not using, I'm using the uh, aftermarket. So I may need to see how much uh, new, new fork bearings, uh, bushings are, because that's what these rings are here. Thing is, these uh, forks felt pretty good when I was riding it around before, so I kind of tempted to just put them back together. And I got to figure out how I'm going to get the the ring and the bushing out of this one. That doesn't look like it's going to be a lot of fun. And I may end up wrecking this bushing, getting out the uh, getting it out of there anyway. Let's see what I can do with this washer here. It does move, so that's good. Doesn't look like I suffered any damage on the top of these forks here. Just got rust in the groove. Now, how to get that bushing out of there, because that needs to come out. So I got this backer ring out of there, which has been bent, but I think I can flatten that back out. It should be okay. Um, but obviously the snap ring's out. I still got that bushing sitting in there. It's sitting right here. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that out. But it looks like the fork lower is in decent shape. All right, so I think we're gonna go for a part three. I'm go ahead and uh, make this a part two. I wasn't expecting to have any issues like this today, but you never are expecting issues, are you? But uh, it's no big deal. I mean, I got a lot done, honestly. Getting that snap ring out is a huge deal. Uh, I think, Depending on the price of these bushings, I might just go ahead and put new ones in there. Why not? We got it all apart. It's pretty clear that that oil was really dirty and old. I'm going to do a little bit of research. If they're, if they're outrageous, I might leave them alone. But if they're cheap enough, you know, if it's like 20 or 30 bucks maybe. Because this, according to the manual, this thing's shot. You know, you can see all that copper there. It really should look a lot like that. You know, all gray, you can kind of tell in some spots that there's copper metal under it. It doesn't matter on the inside here because this just spins around a little bit on the on the fork tube. But but this one, this is the one that, you know, I'm going to have to look. Maybe it's the inside's what matters on this one because I may not have to put bushings in this. Because that copper area you see there actually is uh, stationary inside the fork lower. This is why I need to make a part three, because instead of jumping to conclusions, I need to go look and see what the wear pattern on each of these bushings is supposed to be. Because looking at them right now, they they might be fine. That'd be great, because then that means I do just put the oil back in it and put it all back together with fresh oil, you know, just clean it out real good and put new oil in there and then uh, change that rear tire and we're done. So that'd be great. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh, I gotta do some research because I wasn't expecting to see any of this in here. I wasn't expecting to get hosed down with oil either. Another reason I want to quit. <laughs> it stinks. It's nasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and come back. So I'll see you in the next video. See ya.